good morning, everybody. Uh, we're almost afternoon. Thank, thank you for being here. Uh, I am here today to announce uh, the incoming speaker. Uh, we're going to call um, a special session next Thursday, but I am calling on today that we're going to have a special super committee uh, uh, led by Chairman Wisniewski to keep expanding on the good work that the Transportation Committee had done during this session because this has become more than a transportation issue. It's now gone beyond that, and I want to ensure that we give all the tools and resources to this committee to actually be able to leave no stone unturned to find out, you know, what happened here cannot happen again, and an abuse of power like this is not uh, something that we all stand for. Um, we're going to seek, uh, we're going to have independent counsel that we're looking into. So this committee is a committee that is going to sit both uh, Democrats and Republicans on it. It'll be a super committee. The members are still to be determined. And I look forward to, to working together with the chairman. And every step of the way, we have been working along with the Senate and keeping them informed that we've been doing. It's great work that the chairman has done so far. And we want to keep moving forward as we still have to do the people's business and still keep working. So we want to make sure that we get an outside counsel, outside counsel that will facilitate this effort. Uh, I'm going to let the majority leader say a few words. Thank you. I'm just going to follow up on the speaker's comments. We have been uh, working very closely with the chairman. Uh, chairman Wisniewski has done an outstanding job. We're very pleased with the work that's been done to date. Uh, the goals around creating a super committee is reflective of a couple of uh, issues. One is that the business of the state must go on in spite of uh, the allegations that are out there. And we are going to take the expertise from geographical regions as well as with a focus on the communities that were impacted to make sure that a super committee is created that can really address this on an ongoing basis for however long is needed. Speaker and I are reviewing those names and working with the chairman to make sure that a committee is presented that will do just that. Uh, we're, as the speaker said, we're looking at outside counsel because the business of the state must go on. And while the people that we have down at the majority office are remarkably talented, resources are strapped. And uh, to continue to handle the challenges of the upcoming budget that will be addressed and the needs to move forward with state government, we want to make sure that we have the resources available so that the chairman can continue to grow on the outstanding efforts that he's made so far. So we are excited about uh, the opportunity to move forward and get to the bottom of what is these egregious steps. And uh, we will continue to take this one step at a time and follow the evidence wherever it may take us. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to our chairman, John Wisniewski. Uh, thank you. I first would like to uh, make sure it's clear that I appreciate the support and confidence that Speaker Oliver and Majority Leader Greenwald placed in the Transportation Committee in the last session that allowed the committee to move this inquiry to the point we're at today. And I am deeply gratified that the incoming Speaker, Assemblyman Prieto, has continued that confidence and support in the work that we've done. But I think the Majority Leader and this incoming Speaker have both pointed out that this investigation, which started out as an inquiry into the operation and finances of the Port Authority has grown into a much larger investigation that has led us by following emails into the governor's office. And so the effort that is going to be required is much greater. Uh, the staff resources that are going to be necessary is much more severe. And I appreciate the confidence and support that they both have in uh, having me continue this investigation with the support of a super committee that will run a thorough, a fair uh, investigation so that we can follow the facts wherever they may lead us. Uh, I want to point out that this is an investigation that is ongoing. Uh, we have lots of unanswered questions, and we're going to continue to find answers to those questions. And with that, we'd be very happy to take your questions. Yes, Angie. Um, what is, the, um, what is the, going to be the partisan balance of the committee? How many members, and when do you expect to determine them, and have you chosen the outside the council? The Speaker and the Majority Leader have told me that it's going to be a bipartisan committee, uh, but we don't have the exact numbers and, and, and ratio yet, and that's being worked on as we speak. What about yes. the third council? There's a uh, the 
U.S. Attorney's Office has launched an inquiry. Are you at all concerned that you're going to somehow obstruct that, or is there, have they asked you not to look at this in any you way? Say something like that? With them? Uh, they they have not, and that's one of the reasons we are going to seek uh, outside counsel. We have not made that decision yet. Who that is, we're looking at who that's going to be, and we'll shortly, uh, as soon as we have that ready, that will be another uh, press release that we will do and let you know. Mr. Speaker, um, there have been many reports in the past few days of um, abuse of power uh, by this administration in dealing with communities uh, such as Hoboken, Jersey City, uh, with individual legislators, uh, for example, uh, Senator Bateman, uh, Senator Keene. Uh, is it your intention or desire that this super committee will look at the whole range of alleged abuse of power incidents, or do you want them to restrict this just to what happened at the GW Bridge? Well, as I said, this has become larger than a transportation issue, and that's the reason that we're creating this super committee. And we're going to give the tools and resources under the leadership of Chairman Wisniewski to see what needs to be looked at, because obviously this trail may need to something else, and we will look at all, um, you know, all uh, evidence that's presented and um, and act accordingly. And that's why uh, seeking outside counsel is very important in case there's other outside agents that are going to be involved in this, we want to make sure we proceed in a proper manner. And may, I follow up on that? Yeah. may I follow up on that, Mr. Speaker? All right. In my understanding, in effect, you're giving him a blank check to look into allegations of abuse of power. We, we, we have not uh, set the parameters yet of what this, you know, this committee is going to do. That's why we're still uh, putting it together. We're going, like I said, seeking outside counsel, so that way we can give the chairman, you know, the tools that to continue the work that he has done so far. So I'm not by any word, uh, 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 any words saying that I'm uh, giving a blank, you know, blank check to be uh, uh, written later. But we are going to investigate, you know, anything if there's abuse of power, we want to know about it. And I yeah. think I think what we believe also is. Those allegations that you just referenced are not, um, the importance is where is the root of the problem, how deep does it go, and who was involved. But the allegations that you just raised, I think, are more about whether or not there was a culture in the office that would allow something like this to happen, which is more important uh, to this specific case and where else it may go is where the evidence will take us. As we saw last week, getting someone before a committee is one thing, getting them to talk is quite another. Is there any power that the super committee is likely to be able to bring to bear that actually gets someone, actually compels someone to answer questions sure. as opposed to simply provide documents? Sure. Remember, the, the investigation has not just been one based on testimony, but largely to this point, most of the information that has led us into the governor's office has been through the documents that have been submitted. Uh, the oral testimony would be very helpful. Uh, we still may get it. We're going to continue to pursue that. But we're also going to continue to look at the documents that are necessary to continue to paint the picture. I just wanted to also follow up on the question about, you know, there's now an inquiry, as I'm told it's called by uh, federal prosecutors <coughs> into this. Let's also be clear that we are a legislative committee and a legislative body. Our job, uh, our concern, is that there was apparently a very massive abuse of power and an attempt to conceal that abuse of power. Uh, before we learned of this, we would have all believed that something like this could not happen. And so we know we need to change laws to make sure it doesn't happen. It's not sufficient that four people have left their jobs either at the Port Authority and the administration because the next people who occupy those jobs will potentially have the same ability to abuse the power. So the Port Authority and other agencies are going to need a drastic overhaul. The only way we can do that effectively is to understand how this happened and the chain of command that allowed it to happen. Just a quick follow-up. Could yeah. you imagine granting some sort of immunity for some of these folks, a couple of key players, to see if you could loosen some tongues here? Well, we already have a statutory provision that says when you're called before a committee of the legislature to testify, there is immunity attached to that. And you know, when we had the committee meeting the other day, there was some dispute by Mr. Zegas, Mr. Wildstein's attorney. But we'll continue to operate under the statutory authority we have. As far as law enforcement granting any type of immunity, as you saw, Mr. Zegas had asked for that. That's something for he and his client to discuss with the relevant law enforcement agencies. Mr. Yes. Chairman, will you be sending out more subpoenas today or waiting for the new session to begin? I think the safe way to approach this is our legislative authority under this existing 
uh, committee expires tomorrow at 12 noon. On Thursday, there'll be a special session in which a resolution is considered and probably adopted that will grant subpoena authority to this new super, super committee. The safer and more practical way to approach this would be, let's wait for that new authority to be instituted. Uh, I don't want to have the committee do work issue subpoenas only to give some lawyer an opportunity to be in court saying, well, because the authority expired at noon on Tuesday, why go through that exercise when we can just do it right on Thursday? Who do you expect to try to call within the governor's inner circle, and would well, you call him your, himself? Would you well, the let's start with your last part. I think it's very premature to be talking about calling the governor and subpoenaing the governor. Uh, we know that this has led into his inner office. And we know the name of the person in his inner office who was involved in it. And so the committee is likely to start with what we know. We know that Bridget Kelly sent an email that authorized it, and we want to know more about her emails and other communications. There may be other facts that come out of that. And so I think it's premature to start creating a list. I mean, clearly, you've all seen many of the emails, and there are a lot of names in those emails, and you could conceivably have a list that includes all of them. I don't know if that's practical or realistic to start talking about today. We've approached this investigation one step at a time, and my hope is, is that with the support of the majority leader and the incoming speaker that we continue to do this one step at a time, follow the facts wherever they lead us. Will you call Mr. Steppian, sir? Will you call Mr. Steppian? Well, well, I think those, uh, Bridget Kelly and Bill Steppian, are the two most likely next individuals and probably ask to look at documents first before we call them in for testimony. And there may be others, but I think we'd be getting ahead of ourselves if we started creating a list today because the facts change as we get information. And so I could give you a name today and see documents next week that change that list. When do you think they might actually be called in? Actually because I think we're ahead of ourselves. I think it's likely that with the reissuance of the authority on Thursday, that subpoenas will be issued on that day, uh, and then we'll move forward from there. Yes, Luke. Uh, it looks like uh, Senator Weinberg's uh, office recently put out a statement saying the Senate hopes to play some role in this process as well. Does this super committee have senators on it as well as just the Assembly, and how will they be incorporated, if at all? Let, let me just say this about Senator Weinberg. She <laughs> has been an invaluable partner to me. Uh, from day one of this investigation, uh, in all of the discussions and deliberations of the committee, although she's not a member, she has been an integral part in bringing her experience, both representing Fort Lee in her understanding of the dynamics of the communities up there, as well as her insight into the things we ought to look at. I envision Senator Weinberg continuing to have a role working with me as we move forward. Speaker. And, uh, and just to elaborate on that, the Assembly had the lead on this, and I did not want to change that uh, from the Chairman, and uh, we've been working well with the, with the Senate, and as he said, uh, Senator Weinberg has been an integral part of this. It is her district, but at this time, I thought it'd be better served that we continue what we were doing to just make sure that all the work we already had done, we can just uh, expand from there with all the proper tools that this committee now will have at its disposal to keep moving forward. Yes. The records released Friday show that the governor's authorities director, Regina Gia, now uh, you know, the incoming chief of staff was copied on this email from Patrick Boyd as early as September 13th. Is she someone you're considering subpoenaing? Well, I think the, uh, the, the revelation that Regina Gia was on the email goes <coughs> to the question that many of us have with the governor's strenuous denial of any knowledge prior to January 8th. When you have so many people in his upper level senior circle that received information about the fallout, the traffic jams, and the efforts to spin the traffic jams, in the context of a governor running for re-election, it strains credibility to say that all of these senior people whose job it is to communicate and keep the governor informed did absolutely nothing with these emails, and that's why we need to start and do this on a piece-by-piece -piece basis to find out who else in the governor's office was involved in the decision that gave Bridget Kelly the belief that on August 13 she could issue an email to close lanes. Andy? Now, do you have a special counsel selected, and if not, when do you all expect to name that person? Yeah. Speaker? Um, do, we do not have that uh, counsel selected yet. Uh, hopefully by as early as maybe Wednesday we may make that announcement and we're working on that. Are yes. you looking for someone that's like a, a formal prosecutor in terms of the counsel? We're, we're Could it be someone who can help you with the investigation and more along the lines deal with some of the legal issues that you guys could potentially It could be a combination of both. So we're looking at all uh, the options on that. With yes. The you mentioned an overhaul at the Port Authority. Based on what you've been able to read in these documents, 
besides Bill Baroni, who's already resigned, and David Blaustein, who else there at the authority do you think needs to be held accountable based on what you've read so far? Well, I think it's Again, it's early to say who should be held accountable, but I know that there are people there that we need to ask questions of or to get a better understanding. I need to understand why Chairman Sampson would uh, be involved in an email communication that talked about him helping to retaliate after Patrick Foy stopped the lane closures. Uh, that's a very strange and disturbing development. Uh, because it's not obviously a normal course of conduct for anybody to chair an authority to retaliate against one of the employees of the authority doing the right thing. And so we need to understand why, and then we could talk about who gets held accountable. Yes? Can you uh, comment on administration members and Port Authority officials switching these conversations to private email accounts, continuing on, et cetera, et cetera? That's a very disturbing development because you see some of these communications start uh, with normal governmental email channels and then switch to private email channels. And if, as the story was originally put forward, that this just was simply a traffic study and you're talking about a traffic study, even if it went bad, you wouldn't switch to your personal email accounts unless you thought there was a reason. And that's what we have to get to the bottom of. Again, okay. in the back, got, this last question. Any, um traction with, with trying to get around the idea of people showing up to the committee and including the fifth on every question again? Has there been any discussion how to advance that? Advice from special well, yeah. I think one of the things in, in terms of looking at special counsel, uh, they'll help guide mm -hmm. us through that. But also, you know, I think that the use of the Fifth Amendment by Mr. Wild, senior attorney, was abusive. Uh, asking the question about, did you work for the Port Authority? Uh, does not seem to rise to the level of any potential liability, yet he invoked the fifth on that and other questions such as, is this your email? And so I don't know that we can presume that everybody who comes is going to abuse that, uh, that right, uh, but we're going to take it step by step, and I don't think we can make a judgment today on what's going to happen until we actually see them come. Thank you all Listen, very much. we got to stop. We have a voting session. That's it. They have a voting session, and they'll be here all day, so yeah. we'll still get stuff for you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.